It's been a while since I put out a new video on the Zoom F6. And there are a ton of features that I haven't covered in this little device. It has so many things that uh, I need to get into and that I've been practicing with and really understanding it a lot more. And that last video I put out was comparing it to the H5, which just so you guys know, I've sold it. Uh, it was good for me for a while. It's just, it was sitting on a shelf and it was just collecting dust. So I needed to get rid of it and get some cash, maybe invested in something new. So keep an eye out for that. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech channel. I'm Justin. And in this video, we're going to be talking about routing the headphone outputs and talking about how it works, what kind of applications you can use it for, and really just understanding it a little bit more because it can be a little bit confusing uh, when you're first starting out with it. So the first thing we're gonna get into is what is routing of your headphone outs or the outputs to your headphones. In the Zoom F6, there's an output section in the menu. And basically what it is, is you can take a signal from any track and send it to a, almost like a bus, if you know what that means, if you worked in audio, basically a bus is a separate track that you would send, like for example, I want reverb on these four tracks. So instead of saying, copy all that reverb to that each individual track of four of them, you send all four of those to a bus track with the same reverb on and the same effect is applied to all of them. Same thing like this, it's a little bit more complex when you talk about a bus, but with this, it's the same concept. Sending a signal, meaning a track or line out or left and right to a specific setting. So the Zoom F6 has 10 settings for its headphones. So you could apply any track, multiple tracks, whatever you want to those settings. Next thing is, why do you need it? Why would you need something like this? Well, for example, it's on one side, it's a pain in the butt sometimes. Like when I was using, using the H5, you had to, when I was doing a lav and a boom, I had to listen to it simultaneously. I had to listen to them both. I got used to it, so it wasn't a big deal. With this, I could choose track one or track two to go to a specific setting. So setting one through 10, I can just choose any one. For me, I use one through six for each individual track and then the remaining ones I could manipulate how I like. So if I have my boom on track one, I throw the track one to setting one. So I know that's when I'm on setting one, that's what I'm hearing, the boom. If I have my lav or some other microphone on track two through six, I use the corresponding setting number or bus almost to apply it to that. And all I will hear on one through six is each one through six track so that there's no confusion. It can get a little confusing, but if you do it like this, it makes it a little, easy, little easier on you. Now that we got all that out of the way, we need to get down to how this works, what's in this menu and really dive into how to set it up at least the way that i do it you can manipulate it however you want but this is how i do it so i don't get confused and how i will move forward using it because it is a game changer if you've used uh handy recorders or lower budget recorders you don't have this option a lot of times the h5 might have had something but i never used it so knowing that it's here for the zoom f6 is really nice and knowing that i can optimize my work is so much better and it really makes a big difference. So as I said before, to change your settings, meaning the setting one through 10 of what your output is for your headphones, the wheel that controls the volume for the headphones doubles as a button. So if you click it in, you change the output setting. So one through 10, and then you gotta click and click and click until you go through it and then it starts over again. So if you want to get to from one to 10, you go one to 10. But if you're on five and you want to go back to one, you got to click through. So a little convoluted, which I'll get into a couple of things, a couple of nitpicky things that I have, but it's rightfully so it's understandable. Uh, but you just got to deal with it because I don't see another way around it. Now to get to this 
headphone output section. So you're simply going to go to menu, output, headphone out, and there you go. You're there and all the options are there. Before we go into the headphone routing, we're gonna talk about all the stuff that's there and explain it to you so that you know what you're getting into. But mainly this video is going to be talking about the routing, but just to help you guys out, I'll explain those things as uh, functions. It's pretty simple, it's not that hard, but just so you guys know. So within this section, you're gonna have routing, digital boost, volume curve, and alert volume. The routing section is basically what I was saying before. It's the routing of where you want the tracks to go, corresponding to the settings that the headphone out has. Next up is a digital boost. It's basically like an, a digital amplifier for your headphone. So if you want a little bit more volume on there and a little more oomph with your uh, headphone out to your ears, uh, there it is. The next one is volume curve. Now this is going to be how to manipulate your volume uh, adjusting. So there's three options. There's linear, A curve, and S curve. Linear basically just means it flows up and down steadily, regardless of where you're at on the level, one to 100. A curve is basically the closer you get the volume to the minimum position, the more rapidly it will change. So when you get below 50, it starts to go faster, faster, faster. I don't know how or why you would use it. Maybe it'll be helpful. And of course, the last one is S-curve, which basically is the closer the volume gets to middle position, the more rapidly it changes. So if you're going up to middle, it changes more rapidly. And if you're coming down from 100, it changes more rapidly. I'm a big fan of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So the linear is working just fine. It's the volume. If I hear it, I, if I hear it just fine, then why mess around with it? And of course, the last thing is the alert volume. Basically, when you press the uh, record button, you get a beep and stuff like that. So you could adjust how high that, high or low that, that you want it. Now let's get back into the actual routing of the audio. And it's pretty simple. There's some simple factors in here, but I need to explain all the stuff that's in there so that you have uh, a basic understanding and then you know how to apply it properly. You don't have to follow along exactly what I do, but you have to understand what they are so you could apply it properly. So when you go into the routing section, at the top, you're gonna see which setting you're at. So setting one through 10. And you could adjust that by clicking in that volume button. Very easy. And you could adjust it as you go. As I said, one through six for me is applied to the corresponding track, one through six. Just makes it easier than seven through ten that's why they have ten so that you can manipulate it how you want you could have one and three on track seven or setting seven and you could have two and five on track or setting <laughs> setting eight it's a little confusing but it, it's pretty much the same concept of one through six but you can manipulate it you could have multiple tracks on one setting so if you wanted to hear all the labs, like if you got three labs going on, that's from three or four to six, for example, and they're all labs and you wanna hear them all at the same time, cool. Then you could send that all to uh, setting eight or whatever it is. Next up, we have all the tracks, the left and right and the line. Now these are things that you see on the side, obviously you see all the tracks, but the left and right and then the line out is another thing, all different levels that you see on the main menu while you're recording. Now, for all those tracks, you have left and right, and then below it, there is an MS. Now, when you engage this, it basically takes those th that block. They're in blocks. So, one and two, two and three, uh, three and four, and then four and six. Uh, no, five and six. I know numbers. Okay. So, if you engage that, it puts the corresponding block, so the two track block, into pre, the pre option. This is if you're running mono stereo. I think MS is, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's mono stereo. So it's corresponding that. So if you wanted to uh, have uh, stereo microphones or whatever it is. Now, finally, when we get to the bottom, you have pre, post, mono, and clear. Pre is basic. It's very simple. Pre and post, it means pre-fader or post-fader. If you have pre-fader, 
adjusting the fader won't adjust the volume in your headphones. Only the volume will. Post will adjust both in the fader and in the volume knob. So keep that in mind. I like to use pre because I want to use uh, the raw audio and there's a difference in quality. So keep that in mind. And lastly, clear just clears everything and uh, undo undoes that undid everything you just did. So be very careful with that. All right, just to recap what I do when I use this, when I use this function. One through six is to their corresponding tracks. Seven for me, at least, is usually the lav and the boom. A lot of times I do a lot of interview style stuff when I worked. At one point I did. I'll be back to my regular job soon at the end of the year and be moving and things like that. So I'll have this as a side gig if opportunity uh, comes knocking. But in the meantime... I'm going to continue making videos like this and all stuff like that. But regardless, seven is usually lav and boom. Eight is something eight, nine and ten are usually just flexible to whatever I need it, depending on the job that I'm doing. So that's basically it with the routing of the tracks to the headphones, to the settings that they offer you. Uh, of course, I didn't go too in depth with it. Uh, I tried to give you the basics and build a foundation for you guys so you can uh, manipulate it the way you want. But if you want to know anything extra, down in the comments, I'll be happy to talk to you guys about it. The manual is in the description, and you can check out my stream where I just hang out, listen to music, do some dot to dot art, play some video games, and of course, talking to you guys and chatting it up and just having a good time. And all I ask is in the comments and in the stream, uh, just be positive. That's all I ask. Uh, Wednesday and Saturday is when I stream. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. Hope it was helpful and hope it gave you some information about the Zoom F6. Uh, I have a bunch of Zoom F6 ideas coming out, uh, hopefully within April. So keep an eye out for that. I have, at the end of the month, I'll be putting out more microphone stuff. I just need a little bit of a break. It's been kind of uh, rinse and repeat kind of thing for me. So I need to take a break from that for a little while. So I'll be looking forward for the next couple of weeks to some tutorials and some different stuff. Just some things I want to try out and uh, see if you guys like. And um, speaking of liking, if you like this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos like I just spoke about and really just everything on this channel I'm, I'm not really sure where the channel is going to be going in the future but like i told you earlier this year it's still going to have a foundation of microphone reviews tech reviews but i have things that i want to do short films i'm writing a book on and off <laughs> maybe one day i'll finish it but regardless there's a lot of things i want to try and do and i'd like to put it out on this channel to if anything just have a catalog of things i could look back on and have my kids uh look back on of seeing me be a dummy on you know, online so yeah i got a lot of that now and just so you guys know it just passed a year since my first upload that upload isn't up anymore because it's horrendous uh maybe one day in the future i'll take it out of the vault like disney does with their movies um but it ain't gonna see the light of day for a while so if you saw it if you were one of the like 70 people that saw that video we don't speak of that no no it was bad lighting the audio was eh, and it was a microphone review so that's ew, it was bad i had it it's, yeah i don't want to talk about it no talking about it so that's it for me until next time be safe be kind and i'll see you in the next video i guess if i'm gonna go down a, a nice sweet lady with a blade would be a good way to go then again, I don't know how sweet she really is. She did just slip my freaking throat.